welcome to another video in which we will talk about an important concept of supply chain management which is known as bulwark effect in supply chain and at the end we will also be using uh, a typical example from our daily life so in order to understand this concept first of all we need to understand two things what is supply chain management and what is bulwark effect so first of all let's try and understand the supply chain as it consists of two words supply and chain actually the main purpose of the supply chain is to supply things from one end to the other end so in this chain one end is the we can start it from a farmer level and the other end is the consumer level so how things raw material finished products packed products they reach from one end to the other end these units which are there in a chain form are combined and known as supply chain and when you try to manage this chain it is known as supply chain management so typically what is happening here is that farmers are producing something and they are giving it to raw material suppliers they are dealing b2b business to business and then these suppliers they supply these things to the manufacturers these manufacturers adding some more value to the already uh, products they make those things they turn them into finished products and then they give it to the wholesaler the wholesalers buy things from the manufacturers in bulk and then the wholesalers further sell them to the retailer and then the retailer sells it to the consumer so mostly supply chain ends at the con uh, consumer level because thing things are consumed here all of these starting from the farmer to supplier to manufacturer to the wholesaler and retailer they are buying things for the purpose of business because farmer is selling something to supplier and making some money and then supplier is selling something to the manufacturer and making some money and then same the wholesaler and the retailer and then the retailer then makes some money and uh sells it to the consumer so this chain of these people or these units or these uh, organizations the chain of these units is known as the supply chain so first of all we need to understand what is supply chain the second thing that we need to understand is what is a bull whip bull whip as you can see here bull whips are are the tools which were traditionally used to control livestock in open country actually bull whips are the kind of uh, you can say a weapon or a tool that farmers used to use to control uh, their animals when they uh, went for grazing but what is a bull whip effect in order to understand that just under, understand this thing that when small fluctuations at one end can lead to large fluctuation at the other end this is known as bull whip effect as you can see in this whip that a slight uh, jerk of the hand or the elbow can lead to a larger impact in chain if you just imagine if you if you're pulling up a uh, whip this is how the whip is going to uh, react and then the, the the small change starting from here and ending at a larger change is known as the bull whip effect now how do we use these concepts in supply chain that is the most important thing that we are trying to learn in this lecture in supply chain we'll also use an example but uh, just to 
understand that a small change at one end which can be the consumer end can lead to a larger change at the manufacturing end or the farmers end or the uh, raw material end so how small fluctuations in demand at the retail level can cause progressively larger fluctuations in demand at the wholesale and then to the distributor and then to the manufacturer and then to the raw material or so on if there are other uh, units involved in the same chain we will also talk about this in the example and there you need to understand it very clearly but a few things to study before we go to our main example the bulwick effect is a supply chain phenomena describing how small fluctuation in demand at the retail level can cause progressively larger fluctuations in demand at the wholesale distribution manufacturer and raw material supplier level now where does this phenomena comes from it comes from the subject physics the effect is named after the physics involved in cracking a whip how does this take place when a person holding a whip snaps their wrist the relatively small movement causes the whip whip's wave pattern to increasingly amplify in the chain reaction as we, we we've just seen here that it was a small snap from here but it caused the same force caused a bigger fluctuation or a bigger change at the end but in a wave form in a chain form so this concept of physics or taking control of the animals has been used in supply chain so now let's talk about uh, an example so this is the example that we'll be talking about and then we'll also talk about it in a diagrammatic form now first of all suppose for example a retailer typically sells 20 packs of something per day this is the normal routine 20 packs per day the sale is 20 packs per day but one day due to some event due to uh, any unknown reason the retailer sells 70 packs maybe there's a party or something maybe there is a, a, a sudden a hike in demand after selling 70 packs per day the, the one day for one day only this actually the retailer assumes that customers are going to buy more of this product and respond by ordering 100 packs to meet this higher forecasted demand now what is happening here is that the retailer is thinking that because he or she has sold 70 packs in a day therefore in the coming days the retailer is still going to sell 70 packs because somehow uh, he has forecasted that the demand has gone up so in order to take care of this 70 pack forecasted sale he or she is going to order the retailer is going to order 100 packs from the distributor now when distributor gets a, uh, a demand of 100 packs what he is doing he is thinking that the that that the demand has increased therefore he has ordered 200 packs from the manufacturer in order to meet the need of the retailer so the, the retailer impacted the distributor and then the distributor impacted the manufacturer and then when we look at the manufacturer he or she is going to produce 250 packs to be on the safe side now what is happening we've seen that 70 packs increase from the 20 packs it's a one day increase but retailer has forecasted that he might be selling 70 packs per day from today onwards so he orders 100 packs from the distributor the distributor orders 200 packs from the manufacturer the manufacturer in order to be on the safe side 
makes 250 uh, packs. So what is happening here is that in the end, the increased demand has been amplified up the supply chain from 70 packs at the customer level to 250 at the manufacturer level. Let's look at this example in a diagrammatic form. Now, if you can just see that consumers suppose have ordered one plus thing from the retailer. Retailer, because there's one plus, orders two pluses in his or her order to the wholesaler. Wholesaler thinking that the de demand has gone up, orders three from the manufacturer. And manufacturer thinking that the demand has gone up may cause, may, may start making seven orders. And then because he's making seven orders and raw material of seven orders from the supplier, the supplier has started producing material for 12 uh, of those products. And then he is going to order the farmer the 20 uh, products raw material in order to be on the safe side. Now, what is happening here is that because of one plus order, which means if usually that customer was buying uh, 12 packs of something, today he has bought 13. So the, the one plus order from the consumer side led to uh, a bigger increase at the retailer and then even bigger at the wholesaler and further even bigger at the manufacturer level and further bigger at the supplier level and further bigger at the farmer level. So small impact at one end led to a larger impact at the end. Till now, we have just talked about the increasing demand from the consumer, but it can also be the decreasing demand from the consumer. For example, this, the same story can be told as that customers have started, the consumers have started ordering less. So thinking that they are going to buy less, the retailer will order less. The wholesaler will order less. The manufacturer will further order less. And then supplier will further uh, order to the farmer less amount of uh, raw material. So this effect in positivity or negativity can increase at one end because of a small change at the other end. So this thing is known as a bull whip effect. Thank you very much and uh, keep watching for more videos.